Hello everybody and welcome to the Clark County Public Library program After School Posse. My name is Miss Amanda and today I'll be reading you a book and showing you a craft that you can make at home. Today we'll be reading Earmuffs for Everyone, How Chester Greenwood Became Known as the Inventor of Earmuffs by Megan McCarthy with permission from Simon and Schuster. The word muff has been around since the Middle Ages. Starting in the 1700s, people wore muffs on their hands to keep them warm, like this. This muff keeps my hands so very warm. In the 1800s, hand muffs looked like this. Dance with me, darling. I can't until you take your hands out of that giant muff. In 1858, William Ware invented one of the first kinds of earmuffs, called ear, cheek, and chin muffs. Ho hum. Other designs followed. Ear protectors, May 13, 1873, by M. Isidore. Improvement in caps, August 17, 1875 by Adolf Schwartz. Ear Slippers, May 15, 1877, by I. B. Kleinert. Cap and collar combined, April 9, 1878, by M. Isidore. Ear Protector, June 26, 1883, by C. Beard and C. E. Baldwin. Another inventor named Isaac Kleinert placed ads in major newspapers to promote his ear protectors. Kleinert made other things too, mostly out of rubber. He made waterproof baby pants. He also made dress guards, which protected ladies' clothes from sweat. Ew. Underguard. Believe it or not, his company exists today. You can still buy a pair of sweat protectors. But the guy everyone knows as the inventor of earmuffs is Chester Greenwood. Chester Greenwood as an adult. Chester Greenwood as a boy. As the story goes, he had gigantic ears, and they were sensitive to the cold. He didn't like to wrap his head in scratchy scarves, so he ran home to Granny and asked her to fashion some ear covers out of wire and cloth. Kaboom! Earmuffs were born. Obviously, the story isn't quite true, since earmuffs had already been born many years earlier, four months before Chester was. And there is another story that says Chester didn't like the woolen earmuffs that most kids wore, so he fashioned something else. What do you think really happened? What we do know for sure is that after testing various versions of his earmuffs, when Chester was just 19, he got one of these from the US government. It's a patent. I know what you're thinking. Just what is a patent? Patents are issued by the US Patent Office. When Chester was a boy, the office building in Washington, DC looked like this. A patent allows the inventor the sole right to make, use, or sell something. It means that no one but the inventor can make money from it. Here are some famous patent inventions. Coke bottles, band-aids, scotch tape, 
space capsule, Lego blocks, Apple computer. Before Chester's earmuffs came along, earmuffs didn't fit snugly to the ears. Chester came up with a tight steel band that held those mufflers in place. That is what Chester did for earmuffs. He made people's ears even warmer. It's just like the story of Thomas Edison and the light bulb. Thomas Edison, famous inventor. These inventions uh, came before Edison's, but before Edison, light bulbs didn't stay lit for long. One of Edison's early light bulbs lasted for 40 hours. That was a big improvement. Edison didn't invent the light bulb, he made it better. That is what Chester did for earmuffs. Joseph Swan's light bulb, patented in 1878, lasted for 13 and a half hours. Henry Woodard and Matthew Evans light bulbs, patented in 1875. Back to the story of Chester Greenwood. It is said that when Chester was a boy, he was already thinking about how he could earn money. He went door to door selling eggs he got from his family's chickens. With the profits from the eggs, he bought candy. Most kids would have eaten the candy, but not Chester. He sold it. Even as a boy, he was practicing good business skills. It was those good business skills that helped the young Chester sell his ear protectors as far off as Canada. Soon he earned enough money to buy a wonderful home for his family. It sat high on a hill overlooking the town and river. And it was said that he had the first steam car in town. Chester also had a workshop in town. On the top floor was his earmuff factory. Below was his bicycle shop. Chester didn't just invent earmuffs. He worked on other products as well. Here are a few of his improvements. Round bottom kettle. Chester rounded the edges to reduce wear and make the kettle last longer. Rake. The rake was metal and had removable parts, so when a tooth broke, the owner could put a new one in instead of having to buy a whole new rake. Umbrella bag. To hold umbrellas. This was not patented. And then there's this portable house, which could be easily built and taken apart. Would you want to take this camping? While Chester was busy with his business, his wife, Isabel, was busy with her own affairs. She had joined the main chapter of the women's suffrage movement. The suffrage movement was a women's rights movement. One of its main goals was to get women the right to vote. Women were not able to vote in the late 1800s. Isabel held meetings at their house on the hill. Perhaps this is why Chester employed so many women at his factory. In 1937, Chester Greenwood passed away. Soon after his death, his factory closed for good, but Chester would not be forgotten. What's interesting is that by 1939, people seemed to remember Chester and forget all about the other earmuff inventors. An article in Life magazine read, Beauty and fashion come to the lowly earmuff. Earmuffs were invented 64 years ago by the late Chester Greenwood, a Farmington Falls, Maine lad with sensitive ears. For nearly 60 years, he was the sole purveyor of earmuffs to postmen, policemen, farmers, and country boys. 
He had only one style, like the late model, like the model T Ford, black, utilitarian, unlovely. The market was almost exclusively male. Then, four years ago, skiers and college girls made them fashionable. The, they only remembered Chester. To them, he was the inventor of earmuffs. Many people wanted his legacy to live on. In the 1870s, a man named Mickey McGuire, who worked at a newsstand, thought there should be a Chester Greenwood Day. To drum up excitement, Mickey made up some stories. Mickey said that Chester woke up at 4 a.m. and ran a mile to the factory to light the boilers. I couldn't remember what was true and what was not, said Mickey's friend, a journalist. I still can't. I'm afraid that I told some terrible, wicked yarns. Chester Greenwood Day went all the way to the Maine legis legislature. The congressmen argued back and forth. Some wanted the day. Some thought it was silly. One senator said, now we've roped the national media into giving us publicity. Let's kill it. Another senator disagreed, saying, I predict that every December 21st, Maine will be back in the news. After much disagreement, Chester Greenwood Day was officially in 1977. <clears throat> Every year, Chester Greenwood Day is celebrated in December. There are people, there are people and buses and cars all wearing earmuffs. Everyone has a good time. Chester is celebrated each year as the inventor of earmuffs. And that's how the story goes. Chester may not have created the original earmuff, but he made it better. Sometimes that makes all the difference. The end. Now I'll show you a craft that you can make at home. Here I've made a snowflake out of pipe cleaners and beads. First, you'll take some long pipe cleaners and twist them together to make the shape of a snowflake. Then you'll take some short pieces and twist them on to make the little branches. You can also add some beads. and some more branches. Until it looks something like this. Thanks for listening. Bye.